The New York Mets have played two weeks of spring training games, and we're about halfway through the spring training schedule. We've seen a lot of good, a lot of bad. We've seen prospects prosper. We've had big leaguers get their ABs. And we all know spring training results 95% of the time do not matter at all. That does not mean there aren't players that pique our interest and say, hey, this guy's having a pretty good spring, and this guy's having a knock. In today's video, I will be breaking down three players that have surprised me in Mets camp and three players that have been disappointed. So we'll start off in the guys that have been disappointing, and we will start with Mets Rule 5 draft pick, Zach Green. With that being said, he was supposed to be on the opening day roster because he was a Rule 5 pick, and he cannot be sent down before being offered back to the New York Yankees. And in four games, Zach has not looked the greatest. He had a good start to his spring his first outing, but ever since, he has been bad in three and two-thirds innings pitch. He's given up four hits. He's given up five runs. One earned, one home run, five walks to three strikeouts. Not the greatest first impression for a guy who, as of now, is guaranteed a spot on the opening day roster because of his Rule 5 draft pick status. Yes, it has been four outings. I think he still will be given the benefit of the doubt because of being a Rule 5 pick. So the Mets can say, hey, how much longer can we have to keep this guy without losing him for nothing and giving him back to the Yankees. Just been hit around a lot, walking guys. He did blow the game against the Houston Astros, giving up a game-tying three-run homer in the bottom of the ninth. He had a lot of pedigree of having a decent year in AAA. We thought, okay, this could maybe be a nice little out-of-nowhere, you know, wait. Again, this is a guy we thought we can bring in, front end of that bullpen and taking one of those spots. I mean, hey, he's better than a Drew Smith. He's better than those guys. And Drew Smith has outperformed him in spring. We thought could be a very nice, solid middle reliever for free, and he has not lived up to that Rule 5 draft status. Moving to the offense, and let's move to journeyman utility man Jose Peraza. The Mets brought Peraza back on a minor league deal after last season signing with the New York Yankees. And Peraza so far in spring has been bad. Nine games, 21 ABs, has homered three for 21, uh, an OPS at 503. Being known as one of the guys in the 2021 bench mob, we were expecting more. Again, we've seen him have success in a Mets uniform. We brought him back. He has not done anything offensively, but again, in him being on a minor league deal, he can be stashed away, but we had a little more upside, especially that we know he's had success. And we thought, hey, this could have been a very valuable bat off the bench backup infielder if an injury to a guy like Jeff McNeil, Francisco Lindor, you would have some, you know, quality MLB depth, and he has not provided that early in the spring. In an emergency, he is better than most of the depth the Mets have had in previous years. I think he's still very good defensively. He gives you some positional versatility. I just expected more offensive production from Jose Peraz. Moving on to our final disappointing player early in spring, and that is going to be our fourth outfielder, Tommy Pham. The Mets signed Tommy Pham to a one-year deal, major league deal, to be the fourth outfielder for the Mets playing in the corners. He has played center field in spring training, but we have seen he cannot do that. But Tommy was a guy we brought in hit left-handed pitching and to be that corner outfield depth. So far in spring, he's only played in eight games. He is three for 22 with six strikeouts, three walks, and a double. We did not expect a lot coming from a 35-year-old bat who, who continues to regress, but Pham has been atrocious. Most of the ABs have been uncompetitive, and even his hits have been little lucky duck snorts. And the biggest disappointment is that Buck Walter continues to play Tommy Pham in center field and saying, hey, let's see if he can. It has been pretty well seen in the few games that we have seen him in center field. He cannot play, especially at age 35. He's not a center fielder. He's going to be strictly a platoon or, in worst case, maybe even just DH caliber defender where his defense has regressed and he has to be – you cannot play him in the outfield, which continues to show why this was a signing the Mets did not need. He's 35 years old. We've seen the best of Tommy Pham. You're not getting that guy who hit tw consistently at 20 home runs with St. Louis and Tampa Bay. That guy is long gone. And maybe I'm lucky. And maybe he has a hot stretch. But he has been very disappointing for him. This was our big offensive upgrade, that an external offensive upgrade. Tommy Pham was the biggest guy they went out and got. And that's early in spring. Not so. Let's get to the bright spots of spring training, and let's start off with switch hitting outfielder Abraham Almonte. The Mets brought in Almonte on a minor league deal. 
Last season, he played a little bit of time with the Boston Red Sox, the switch hitting corner outfielder with the Mets needing much needed depth with no minor league prospects in the minor leagues in the upper levels. And in eight games, he's seven for 14, two doubles, three RBIs. And Abraham Amante, again, from a minor league caliber signing, we didn't think much of it. Maybe we saw some power upside, but we were like, eh, we lose a guy of Tommy Fama Marte. He's an upgrade from the Nick Plummers and the guys that we have brought in. Early in spring, he has just produced like a madman. Seems like every game this guy's leaving, at least with a hit, which is good to see. He did just have a little injury, which will hopefully not keep him out for long. But the time that we've seen, he has definitely been one of the bright spots in a much needed category with the match and being some depth in the outfield. Picked up that injury. Hopefully he gets back on the field soon because he has been a very nice revelation from in him being a switch hitter, adding value, to not just being a left-handed hitter, being a switch hitting corner outfielder. The Mets are in desperate need of that. And Abraham Almonte has been a very pleasant surprise to have some external depth in a position of need that is the outfield. Let's move on to the pitching in the bullpen battle that is the last three spots in the New York Mets bullpen. And let's talk about 30-year-old right-handed reliever Sam Coonrod. The Mets claimed Sam Coonrod off waivers from the Philadelphia Phillies in the offseason. And in four innings pitched in four games, six strikeouts, one walk has not allowed a run. An opponent uh, batting average against at 133. We've seen him consistently hit 97 with that wipeout slider. And again, for a guy who's 30 years old, free waiver claim. This is what Billy Epler's was main plan in the offseason, it seemed like, was to grab a bunch of these guys who have high velocity and great sliders. And Coonrod has been an absolute bright spot and is leading the battle, in my opinion, for one of those three spots in the back half of the New York Mets bullpen. And it's great to see the Mets have these guys who can throw 97, can throw for some velocity. Yes, Coonrod has not had success with the Philadelphia Phillies, but we know and there's a track record of the Philadelphia Phillies ruining great arms in the relievers and his starting pitching. They've already killed Andrew Painter. Good job, Philly. You know, if he's taking the Drew Smith role, which a lot of Mets fans, including myself, would love to see Drew Smith role diminish and just completely be off this team, Sam Coonrod can go into that situation and be like, hey, he's the kind of leading that second group, and the Mets have done a great job with other guys that he brought in. And in my opinion, he is – almost guaranteeing himself a spot in this bullpen if he continues to pitch like this with guys like Nagosik and, hell, even John Curtis being that front end of the bullpen. Kudron has been a pleasant surprise, again, for a waiver claim. And, yes, it's early in spring. We need to continue to see the success. For free that they picked him up for nothing and you're already getting this and maybe this is another Jeremy Hefner tweaking a grip or tweaking a release point and you're already seeing dividends from it and if Coonrod is a guy who can be trusted in middle reliefs and can be trusted in the sixing and that second group he's way better than what the Mets have had in the past I would love to see more of Sam Coonrod throughout the spring and hopefully he is on the opening day roster my favorite surprise of New York Mets spring training let's talk about journeyman outfielder Tim LaCastro the Mets signed Tim LaCastro on a minor league deal last season playing with the New York Yankees and Tim LaCastro is one of my favorite bad players in baseball. He's one of he's an elite base runner. He's super fast. He's one of these guys who can just be a pest on the base pass. But his main thing is he never really hit. And he can play center field, which the Mets desperately could use an emergency center fielder with the injury history of Brandon Nimmo. And Tim LaCastro this spring has been on an absolute tear, and I am all for it. 11 games played, 9 for 23, 5 doubles, 5 stolen bases, 6 RBIs, an OPS of 1,100, 391 BA. This has been a guy who, again, no one saw anything. You know, All they saw Tim LaCastro is, hey, he's a runner. He's a Terran scorer. He's a Travis Jankowski-level guy of, hey, he could just maybe be on this roster to hit, to run but steal bases because, again, we've seen we have a lot of fat guys on this roster. Guys like Darren Ruff, guys like Dan Vogelbach, hell, even Pete Alonzo. This team is not a very fast team in late in games in big opportunities to bring in a guy like Tim LaCastro to pinch run. But this spring, he has been absolutely hitting the damn cover off the ball. It looks like every single game he's got two hits, he's got a double, he has a stolen base, it seems like, in every single game. And he's hitting without runners in scoring position. Yes, how long can he keep this up? You know, he's never been a great hitter. He's been hit by a pitch four to five times this spring. He already fits into that Mets getting drilled. He fits that mold perfectly. He gets hit more than Mark Canna. And again, he would be the backup center fielder if anything were to go down with Brandon Nemo. And I can firmly believe if, you know, spring results did matter, he would be on the opening day roster and Tommy Pham wouldn't. Like, he is hitting his way onto this roster. And we've seen the history of this team with guys like Jankowski and, and Gore. The Mets do value speed. So if LeCastro keeps hitting this way, 
there's a world where Tim LeCastro is on the opening day roster for the New York Mets, and I'm all for it. Give me better ABs than Travis Jankowski did, which I think he can, and he's showing the ability of pulling the ball down the line, you know, pulling the power. I'm all for it. And you know how Buck Showalter is. He's a very old-school manager. He will fall in love with a guy like Tim LeCastro, leading, leading defense, leading pinch running, and we've seen him already do it with Jankowski and Terrence Gore, like I said. We are still 18 days away from opening day. A lot can change. Injuries, slumps, some of these guys can get hot. A lot can change for the New York Mets, including the guys who the guys who have struggled can have great rest of their springs. The guys that have had success could begin to struggle. All we know is the Mets in spring training games, we're at the point where we're already sick of them and, and ready to watch actual games that matter. The WBC has started. All of our guys have gone. So these will give more looks to these guys who've stayed in camp to battle for position. Leave in the comments section down below who has been your guys' biggest surprises and biggest disappointments. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.